Here's what I'm making. I just finished this one. It's the rear styles uh, to the upper case of this cupboard. And you see that cross section of them. So that's the back and that's the side. And this side angles towards the front. So that will show in the cupboard as will this. The back and these two are all uh, out of sight. And so it's a, an odd sort of shape. And the way that I've got it oriented now, I've got a, the next one split out here. And um, it's quite bulky, but it'll come down uh, pretty quickly. And so those two surfaces are the critical ones. This is the angle between them. So I've uh, set that up on that uh, adjustable bevel. And I'll, I'll first establish this flat right here on this piece. And then the broad face uh, at an angle to that flat. And then the rest of it sort of stems from those two faces. And so maybe this one I just, you can maybe see, I just slobbered white glue, uh, yellow glue on it to keep it from checking. And I could hew this down a bit, but I think it'll plane up pretty quickly. And all of this splitting was done with a fro. Uh, I didn't dress any of this yet with a hatchet, and, and I don't know if I will even. But it was terribly windy out again, and I've made too many wind-blown videos. So I decided to skip that part, just bring it in the shop at this point. And I'll first take the scrub plane to uh, broaden that. This one's to end up an uh, inch and three quarters to an inch and seven eighths wide. And that's two inches there and there. So I'll switch over to a uh, jointer plane now. that's flat this way it's pretty close a little little bit of uh, relaxation there that friend and then I'll check it with those sticks and that's right on the money it's easy enough to get a narrow face like that uh, planed up and so now what I need to do is playing this face. And this is the real most important one in the piece. It has to be three inches broad here. It will have an applied ornament on it, a turned piece on it. So if you saw the video where I um, made the front styles for this part of the cupboard, all I did is shim bits of wood like that into place. Try to hold them with a hold fast. See if that'll do that. And put a similar one under here. Put that on the big side to it. 
and I'll grab that one with a clamp. And then just start to plane that surface and using the bevel gauge to assess uh, that I'm getting the angle I need. I have plenty of width. I need three inches and have three and a half, which is good. Uh, the last one was real close. And, uh, and there's a lot of work in a piece like this and you'd hate to at the last minute decide it's a loser. So that's why this one was split a little heavier just to give me some insurance there. So I'll just start it with that same scrub plane, just to clean that off a bit. Maybe too aggressive. And I can switch to a smoothing plane. begins the game of checking this with the adjustable bevel and you want to keep a few things in mind. You don't want to diminish this facet. I have two inches there so I'm in good shape and you want to keep that what I call that spine that wants to be straight. You don't want to wiggle it. Um, I'm going to clean that up a little. That's quiet. So what I've been finding, as I did the previous one, is that there's some back and forth between these two facets. And I didn't do these first on the previous one and uh, found out that that just makes it harder. So you do these two first. surprisingly good. I thought it would take more work than that, but I'm almost going to buy that, I guess. Um, it's a little vague, that spine is a little vague right here. And that's due to the tear out I was getting going both directions on this. Um, so I, this was flipped around and I was planing that way. So this one, I should be able, let me see if I'm reading that right. Nope. This one. Nah, neither one of them cleaned up well. Uh, I'll flip it around to get it that. So then it's more of the same. I'll mark out the width I want, the three inches, I'll do it three and an eighth, and then plane this surface 90 degrees to that. So let me mark that out. And the three and an eighth is giving me a little bit of um, wood to plane off again when I pick this piece up to mortise it after it's dried for a month or so. 
at that point. It won't be dry, but it'll be drier. So from there, <laughs> if I can get this where I can see it and the camera can see it, I can mark that surface like that. So there's a lot of wood to come off there, and that will become hatchet work. And then this way. Let me see if I can get at that a little bit. until I took that last stroke and I'll double check the angle that's all right one thing I need to do to make sure that hasn't changed it hasn't enough this dimension that's uh, right on right there I'm doing it just a little over inch and three quarters again to allow for a little bit of shrinkage now I'll mark a square line there and here and uh, and from that, I'll go to the hatchet and trim it a little with the hatchet and then come back and finish planing it. So now I've got the hewn piece. I hewed the back of it there pretty much square to this outside corner and had marked that width and hewed its inside face and this inside face is the one that's 90 degrees to that angled face. So that's where I'm going to go first. That's the important one. That will help set that width. So I'm going to just try to arrange it on the bench, sort of propped up by these um, wedges and shims, so that this surface will be pretty much uh, level pretty much being the key phrase there's always some Mickey mousing around a bit um, as I, I think about this now this is the second one of these I've done today and when it's finished I'll be done with them for who knows how long another 20 years before I make another one but the shop that uh, made the original cupboard I'm basing this on, uh, we know of at least 12 or 13 of these cupboards from this shop. So they had a chance to go through this process pretty frequently. Can't imagine that the ones that survive are all the ones they made. They made about mostly in the 1680s. So now that I've got that sort of dressed, I'll start to look at it to see what kind of shape it's in. 
So I'm I'm on my mark here, and yet I'm high here, so that's fine. I can tilt the plane this way to dress that bit down and try not to touch that part. is the back and so it needs to be 90 degrees to this face right here and then a consistent width that way so first I'll, I'll work it uh, so the split and hewn face is a little bit high to my right And I want to adjust the shim. That one won't do it. Maybe I'll switch them. I thought I was going to make a cradle with that angle cut in it, two cradles to sit this in, but it probably seems like more work than it's worth. And that's a ridiculously thick shaving there. Oh my. Start all over. Still way high on my right. All right. Now switch that over to this plane. that's unusual about this piece, one thing that's unusual about it, is to have that broad a surface in the growth ring plane. This is going to finish at three and a quarter inches. And uh, I can't really think, other than a table leg, of anything that's that broad in that plane. Most of the broad faces in 17th century oak furniture are the radial face. In New England furniture. And I'm seeing why. I mean, I'm just tearing it up here and there 
depending on how it's going. It's still way high on the outside. And I've lost my, because uh, I flipped it around. the money and up here I'm sure it's still out but I'm tearing up so I'm going to flip that around try to keep track of where I'm going I'm taking that edge down Because it's the back, that tear out doesn't matter. And that's okay. So now I'll remark that width. And then plane this face, which is the last one and the least critical. So. that. I could have used a marking gauge here I guess. So most of this you can't. But that's one face where I could have and didn't. But now this should lay down pretty well uh, for planing. Right like that. Uh, yeah, so take the inside off again. This is feast or famine today. how easily that radio plane works. Go right to sleep plane in this stuff, which doesn't take any effort at all. And I think I'm gonna, this plane might be set a little heavier than the other one. Here that I've got a, a little waviness there and bump up there. good way, easy to fix way. Better 
but not done. But pretty close to where we're headed. So. This side's tearing up a bit. The reason I made these today is because the piece of wood I picked off the pile had a knot in it that it left only 22 inches above the knot. So I cut these short pieces and this is what they became. And that distortion is based, is a, a result of some of that uh, uh, twisted grain resulting from the knot. So that's close enough for now. And um, I'll get a fresh cut on each end and then um, write the date on it and uh, and seal the ends with some yellow glue to keep them from checking. Same story I've been telling on all these planing videos. But that's uh, the name of the game. So you next time you'll see these in a month or more, I'll be chopping mortises in them. And then, who knows, maybe there will be a cradle to hold them because they'll have to be up here to chop the mortises. We'll see.